Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. A very good morning to you. Welcome to Ask Pastor Gemma. Every Thursday when I get to talk to you, I'm really excited because so many times people have questions and uh, it remains unanswered because you don't know where to go to get these answers. And uh, I feel very privileged that God has given me the opportunity to clear up some things <laughs> for some people. And uh, so here is your chance. But this morning, I want to talk about something that's really important to all of us. So many times we are faced with tragedy and loss and uh, sickness and pain and uh, so many things uh, confront us and uh, many times we're overwhelmed uh, with these things and we have these questions. No, uh, this particular question is not one that I can answer. <laughs> That's why the theme for this morning will be accepting the sovereignty of God. Uh, I was playing around with the topic. Uh, at one time, I thought about, about understanding the sovereignty of God and realized that most times we don't really understand. And so I felt accepting his sovereignty of our lives would have been a better theme. If you are a first time viewer, my name is Gemma Duncan. I'm married to Apostle Vivian Duncan. And together we pass the Divine Destiny Worship Center. Uh, our main branch is in Digo Martin. We have branches in Shogunas, one in San Grande, one in Faisabad. We have a branch in Tobago as well, and uh, Antigua. And we're just growing. We're giving God praise for expanding us, that for causing our influence to shift from uh, Digo Martin to the other place in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, if you're going to talk about sovereignty, uh, we have to try to understand what do we mean by that. And the dictionary says it means supreme, independent power or authority. And the, and the dictionary uses forceful words. Supreme, independent power or authority. And the, the supreme means all-powerful, supreme means paramount, supreme means you're at the top of the list. <laughs> um, supreme means there is nobody above you um, because um, like you have the courts and you have various levels and then you go to England, London as it is with us in Trinidad and Tobago and that's it supposed to be. Well with God, he is supreme. There is nobody higher that you go to. Um, when you appeal to the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that's absolutely uh, uh, the top that you could go. And when they come back with their findings, we have to accept it. Uh, and so it also says independent. Independent means that God works um, all by himself in the sense that um, he doesn't have to have human intervention. He doesn't need any input from us. We are privileged when God will include us in further in his kingdom and, and allow us to have our little uh, part of, you know, further in his kingdom. And I am very grateful to God for that um, because God could do many of these things all by himself. And he chooses to include us as human beings. So it also says indisputable. If you're talking about sovereignty, it says indisputable. So when God um, 
comes down with a judgment, for want of a better word, you can't dispute it. That's it. <laughs> you know, there is no further place to go. Um, it, it says, and then it describes God as being above all in character, importance, in excellence. There are some synonyms, and it, the one is absolute, predominant, and there's a word that we will find in 1 Timothy 6.15 later on, um, potentate. These are very powerful words when you're talking about God. Uh, in my own personal experience, I thought I would start there by sharing how I feel about God's sovereignty. It's a, it's a term that I use a lot to myself, um, you know, and I'd say every time something happens that I don't quite understand, I don't expect, I wish that didn't happen. <laughs> I say to God, I bow to your sovereignty. Um, I don't know that it's God caused it. I'm not sure that God allowed it. Um, sometimes I don't even know how all these things work. But I still say I bow to your sovereignty. I don't know why he didn't prevent it. He could have, because Daniel in the lands then, he, 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 the, the lands couldn't touch them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the furnace, the fire didn't burn them. So one knows that God has unlimited power. Uh, he could do anything if he wants to. Um, and there are some situations that he allowed, um, didn't do anything about, and it happened. Um, who am I to question God? I don't quite understand. And so, how do I view it personally before I go into the Word of God? I look upon God as my Heavenly Father. Jesus says, when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven. And uh, God in His Word says, if earthly fathers know how to give good gifts to their children, how much more will I not give you? And in that particular case, God was saying the Holy Spirit, right? And we use that verse, we expanded a little bit to say, how much more wouldn't he give us anything that's good for us? And so, because God is a good father, because God is the commensurate father, because God is father of fathers, um, because he's not flawed, there's nothing wrong with God. He can't do wrong by nature. He's innately good, and he's my father. When things happen to me, I say, you know what? I accept it because you are my father, and you are a good father. You love me. You care for me. And my father wouldn't want any harm or hurt that will come to me or allow anything to happen to me um, that's not good for me, so I accept it. This is just how I deal with it. I know somebody sitting down there and say, well, um, is that not escapism? I mean, you don't want to face the reality because when you uh, talk about God like that, then, you know, you don't want to face the truth of what is happening. Well, that's how I choose to deal with it. I'm just telling you. Uh, if you are there and you find a better way to deal with the things that you don't quite understand, I am saying be my guest, and if it works for you, then fine. But there are some people who we'll have these questions and I'm saying to you, we have to look to God as a good God. Then God says, I know the end from the beginning. Uh, remember, we are limited in our view and God has what I like to call a panoramic view. He sits in heaven. The Bible says that he sits high and he looks low. So God gets to view things that we don't have a clue. Where I'm sitting, where I'm standing, um, where I am in terms of my concepts and, and, and perception of things, they're very different to God because of what he could see. He knows what's going to happen. He knew that I was going to be born. He knows the length of my days. I don't have a clue. Um, he knows um, what I'm going to accomplish. I didn't have a clue. Um, the truth is, I am discovering myself as I go along. I'm sitting down here talking to you, and if somebody had told me I would be doing this, I would probably think that that person crazy. You know, there is not the possibility that I would be doing this, and yet here am I doing this. How my life is going to turn out, what's coming down the road, I don't know, but I bow to his sovereignty. I'm open to God. And so I'm telling you, I, I trust God as I go along. But let's look now at some of the scriptures that God uses to talk about himself. In Isaiah 42, verse 8, God, in very strong words, is profiling himself. <laughs> And when God talks like that, then I'm not sure that we can say anything other than accept. In verse 8 of Isaiah 42, it says, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory, 
will I not give to another, neither my praise to grieving images. Very emphatic. <laughs> he says, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And uh, the, the King James uses the word Lord a lot. The NIV, which is a more modern version, says sovereign. And many times, when, especially a case like this, when you see God talks about himself as the Lord, he's saying, I'm sovereign. I am the Lord. Uh, the means there is no other Lord. There is no other sovereignty. Now, you could call yourself Lord if you want. Uh, that's fine. We could call ourselves anything. But God says, uh, I am above all lords. That's why Jesus is called King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And God is saying emphatically, I am the Lord. If there are other lords, I could show them who is the real Lord. The fact is, uh, we have had lords who gave themselves sovereignty, who rose and fell at the whim of that God who says, I am the Lord. He determines the, the, the length of a man's days. Uh, doesn't matter how great that man is, God determines how long he will live. And many people have uh, stood in his face and say, uh, well, there is no God and so on. God said, well, okay, you came, you went, and I'm still here. And so he says, my glory will I not give to another. Again in Isaiah, and Isaiah seemed to capture the very mind of God in terms of who he is. We are in chapter 55, verse 8 again. He says, and God is talking. He says, for I know my husband says, don't start a verse by four. You have to go up a little bit. But for our discussion here, I'm starting by four. <laughs> he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Hmm. Yeah. So, all right, God is saying you're trying to decipher me. That's why I told you we, I didn't want to use the word understand. Based on what God is saying here in Isaiah 55 verse 8, we can't understand him. He says, my thoughts are higher than yours. My ways are higher than yours. As the earth is from the heavens, so are my thoughts higher than yours. Come on. He's saying, listen, uh, don't try to outthink me. Don't try to outreason me. And uh, Vivian likes to say, his father used to tell him, your little two by four mind can't really understand God. And that is so important for us to understand that our brain too small to understand God. The God who made the universe and, and it's still functioning. Uh, the God who set the earth in orbit and is still orbiting. Come on. The God who decides that the sun would rise and in the morning and um, go down in the evening, it's still happening. Nothing has changed. And when Job was a little confused, and I'm going to come to Job in a little bit, about what was happening to him, and he challenged God, in the end of the book of Job, God said to Job, let me ask you some questions now. Job asked many questions. And God says a couple of things to Job. He said, when I build the earth and set it on its foundation, were you there? Do you know? where the foundation of the earth is. Uh, he says, when I gave the horse his power, do you know how did the horse get his power? He says, when I told the ocean to come up this far and don't go any further and stop there, because the truth is, if God didn't tell the water to stop there, the water would come in. And sometimes the water comes in <laughs> to devastate the landscape around it. And he says, were you there? And God began to talk to Job. He says, how do birds know how to fly from certain places in the wind, before winter. How do they know how to fly? Instinctively, they, all birds fly from those um, temperate countries and go down to Mexico and those warm places. And as soon as uh, the winter is over, nobody comes to say, all right, fellas, time to go. They just all together decide and know when it's time to fly. How do they know how to fly there? Who navigates them? And God began to question Job as to these things. And Job said, you know what? You know, I, I've said things so wonderful for me to understand. And so I'm saying to you, um, you're going to lose the battle if you decide to try to box with God over issues that you don't understand. You're going to lose the battle and your mind 
um, if you try to contend with God mentally over a situation that you faced. I don't know why it happened to you. And the truth is, pastors don't have the answers. I don't know. Sometimes we posture ourselves as though we have it. We don't because we too have questions about situations that happened to us. We've prayed and um, you prayed in one instance for somebody and they got a miracle and they got a response. And then you pray for yourself or a family member and it didn't quite work out like that. And you're saying to God, well, I mean, look how many people testify that I've been a blessing to them. I prayed and they had their miracle and they had their miracle. Why am I not getting the same thing that I prayed about for other people? Because if it could work for them, then I'm presuming that you as the minister should have more of these than other people. It doesn't work so. God is sovereign. And I came today, I didn't know quite who will be the people who will be viewing, but obviously you are one of those who God is saying to you, I'm sovereign. I don't know if it's a diagnosis that you've got and you're wondering why. And um, you may arguably be a good person. And there are some people who are completely bowled over. Why would this happen to me? Um, you probably lived very well. Some people live healthy lives in terms of your lifestyle. There was no excesses, you know, in any form. And then you get a disease that somebody who uh, lived a different kind of life got. And the doctor says that that person got it as a result of their lifestyle. And you are uh, bowled over. Why is this happening to me? I, you know, I live differently. I'm saying to you, in, at those times, you have to bow to God's sovereignty. We have to call on his mercy and his grace. We have to lean on him for comfort because uh, Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will be called comforter. And in those days, he could carry us and comfort us and bear us through those very difficult times. And that's what we're going to have to get from God. Ask him for the grace to go through, uh, especially when things happen that you can't change. If it's a done deal already, uh, if it's something that's happening, I, I, you could still believe God for the miracle. I tell people, as long as it's not done, it's not over. But there are some things that are done, it's over. It, it is not no recalling that particular thing. Then we have to bow on to God's sovereignty and say, Lord, then help me to live through this. Help me to deal with it. Help me to cope with it. Help me to come out of this praising you. Help me to come out of this. I'm thanking you for the experience that I have had. I, I'm going to look at uh, the book of Job. And uh, I think perhaps uh, that may be where we are going to um, stay for a little while. Um, God, strangely, said something powerful about Job that I don't know that um, I've seen or heard God say about anybody. The Bible uses the word perfect to describe Job. Um, nobody uses the word perfect to describe a human being. Um, that's perhaps what you may used to describe God, and uh, God says Job was perfect, whatever you interpret perfect to mean. The Book of Job, Chapter 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep, and three thousand camels, and five hundred yoke of oxen, and five hundred she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord, and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. 
And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job, and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabians fell upon them, and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose, and rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. To me, uh, that uh, chapter alone gives us a real listening accepting God's sovereignty. Uh, I don't think there's anybody else in this whole world who would probably um, react like Job. Uh, that's why God had to say he was special, he was perfect, because the average human being at that particular time, that would not have been the reaction. It wouldn't be mine. Um, you know, I mean, I uh, make a big issue, much less than what happened to Job. I mean, I'm talking about the first one. <laughs> you know, I, 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 some of the little minor things happened that could be fixed, and you make a fuss. And Job kept, um, you know, losing one thing after another. It's as if you're drowning, and every time your head comes up, something pushes your head underneath again. And the final stroke with his children now, you know, uh, you lose stuff, and Job didn't really say a word when the news came to him, you know, one after the other people were rushing to tell him uh, he lost this, he lost that, he lost the other things. And when they talked about his children, is then the Bible says that he rent his clothes. That hit him in a very special place. But yet, in, in the final verse of Job chapter 1, verse 22 says, In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. I am going to stop here for this morning, but I invite you to join me again next week because uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. It's very important that we learn how to accept the sovereignty of God uh, because some people never recover. Their lives are stopped. They stop living. They become...
celebrating our 40th anniversary as a ministry on Sunday, 16th of July at 4 p.m. Uh, many of you may or may not know that Divine Destiny Worship Center started off as Bible Deliverance Center under Pastor Claire Salandi, she who is now deceased. And it was, for want of a better word, morphed into Divine Destiny Worship Center as it is today. And we are celebrating 40 years since the very inception of this ministry. And Apostle Vivian felt that we needed to really celebrate. We don't really celebrate our anniversaries or like on an annual basis like in church and so on. That's how he is. But this one, and uh, you know, I want to invite all of you, especially those of you who had some kind of input into Bible deliverance. You came at some point, you were ministered to by us in some sort of a way. We want you to join us. It doesn't matter where you are in Trinidad. It's 4 p.m. On, on, on July the 16th, so uh, it could take you a little while to get here, you know, <laughs> you'll get here in time. Um, we're going to find places to squeeze you in, you know, but join us to celebrate 40 years of God's keeping power. And uh, it's an encouragement to those of you who've just started, you know, whatever project that God has called you to do, that uh, He could keep you, you know. Uh, then we have something coming up in September, September 2nd, 2017, is what we have for that day's Expo is We 2017. It's a seminar from 9 to 12, and the topic is entrepreneurship, the key to retirement financing. And in the afternoon from 12 midday, we have a, an expo, an exhibition of people from Divine Destiny Worship Center with their various skills and so on, little business ideas and small business ideas and so on. Uh, this is not the first time we've had it. It has been very successful. And many people who came to the expo are now actually um, doing business uh, Apostle Vivian has the view that you should always have uh, multiple streams of income because life is uncertain in terms of the workplace and uh, income earning and all of that and so that is going to prepare you. So put that down um, in, in your diary. So we have two major things, September 2nd, 2017, uh, the seminar on entrepreneurship, the key to retirement financing and then the expo in the afternoon and then the 16th of July, which is soon at 4 p.m. or 40th anniversary. Please just join us and praise God with us and celebrate with us. I don't want you to ever forget that with God, everything is possible.